We are following the latest in the race for the White House this noon. What we know so far, still ahead. Police investigating an overnight machete attack. Katrina Weber tells us what police think led to the violent encounter. And we have an update on the drought situation here in South Texas. Plus, what are, do our rain chances look like next week? We've got the latest coming up. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. Well, it's two days after Election Day and still no winner in the presidential race. Millions of ballots are being counted in a handful of key battleground states that will decide which candidate secures the 270 electoral votes to become president. ABC's Faith Abube following every development in this cliffhanger election, and she joins us now from Washington. An anxious electorate still waiting to learn the winner of the presidential race. When the count is finished, we believe we will be the winners. Overnight, former Vice President Biden continuing to eat into President Trump's lead in Georgia. The president's still ahead there, but his lead shrinking from a few hundred thousand votes on election night to fewer than 20,000 today. Biden's possible path to the White House growing as the margin narrows in Georgia. ABC News projecting Biden's likely to win in Michigan and Wisconsin, and he's now just 17 electoral votes shy of the 270 needed to win the presidency. It'll be a victory for the American people, for our democracy, for America. Today, both Biden and Trump also hawkishly watching Nevada, which hasn't released new totals since election night. Biden holding a slim lead, but officials are expecting to release new numbers today. Eyes also on Arizona, where Mr. Trump has been closing the gap as each new tally is released. Trump supporters demanding the vote counting continue there. I don't understand what these protesters are interested in. Obviously, we're going to keep counting ballots. That's what we are required to do by law. But Pennsylvania is the big prize with its 20 electoral college votes. The Trump team calling for a freeze on ballot counting there. The president currently ahead in the Keystone State, but his lead narrowing with hundreds of thousands of ballots still to be counted. The majority from Democratic leaning areas. So we'll be going to the U.S. Supreme Court. We want all voting to stop. If President Trump loses Pennsylvania, his re-election hopes would be over. The Trump campaign now mounting court challenges in several states, including Michigan, where he's pushing for more GOP observers to be allowed into counting locations. That was Faith Abube reporting. A judge in Georgia has dismissed a lawsuit by the state Republican Party and President Donald Trump's campaign that asked to ensure a coastal county was following state law on processing absentee ballots. The president's campaign also filing legal challenges in Pennsylvania and Michigan yesterday. The Biden campaign called those lawsuits meritless. Meanwhile, the balance of power in the U.S. House and Senate has yet to be decided. Right now, Democrats have 208 seats in the House, while Republicans have 190. A party needs at least 218 seats to have majority of the House. In the Senate, Democrats currently have 46 seats. Republicans have made gains to 48, and four seats are still up for grabs in the Senate. A party needs at least 51 seats to have a majority. A somber anniversary this noon, today marking three years since the mass shooting at the First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs. This morning, the church honored the 26 people killed during the attack, ringing bells there 26 times at 1125. That attack happened on November 5th, 2017. A gunman opening fire during a Sunday service at the church that marked the deadliest shooting in an American place of worship in modern history. New at noon, police trying to investigate reports of a shooting only to find the people accused of being involved had already taken off. Officers say that they went to West Elmira and Jackson Street just before 10 o'clock last night. A witness told them two people were arguing when one of them pulled out a gun and started shooting. They say that those two people then ran away from the area. Officers were able to find one of them. Police say that the man told them someone fired shots at him, but he wouldn't give any more details. Police weren't able to find that suspect. No one was hurt. It appears that jealousy may have played a role in an overnight cutting. San Antonio police say a man lashed out at his love rival, possibly with a machete at a north side apartment complex. As Katrina Weber reports, police say he was upset about being replaced. 
attack came by surprise. Police say the 36-year-old suspect had been seen hanging around the parking lot of the Jackson Apartments before he went on the attack around 3.30 this morning. They say he saw his ex-girlfriend walking out of her apartment here in the 2500 block of Jackson Keller with another man. Investigators believe he had either a large knife or machete and used it to go after that other man. The 37-year-old victim told police he tried to back away, but the suspect still cut him on his arm. He was taken to a hospital by ambulance where police say he had to undergo surgery. The suspect was last seen driving away in a white Honda. For police, this has never been a question about who did it. They say they've had the suspect's name all along and have gotten a warrant for his arrest. The big task, though, has been trying to track him down. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Police say a man died after he crashed into another driver who had stopped on the northwest side last night. Police say that they identified the victim as 23-year-old Daniel Santiago. According to officers, a line of cars were stopped immediately after a steep hill. This was on the access road of Northwest Loop 410 near Evers Road. Police say that Santiago was riding his motorcycle behind two other cars that were able to swerve without hitting all those stopped vehicles. And that's when police say that Santiago crashed into one of the stopped cars. We're told he was wearing a helmet at the time of the crash, but nevertheless died at the scene. And we are learning more about a man killed Tuesday night during a crash on the far west side. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office identified him as 66-year-old Albert Baca. San Antonio police say that Baca was crossing the street near Dugas Drive and Petrenko Road Tuesday around 8.30 p.m. when he was hit by a woman in a Toyota Camry. Investigators tell us that the driver had a green light and did not see Baca until it was too late. He was taken to University Hospital where he later died and police say the woman was not intoxicated. She also stayed at the scene and cooperated with the investigation, so she will not be charged. Also, police are hoping someone recognizes this person. The officers think that he was involved in a robbery last month. Back on October 29th, police say the suspected, the rather the suspect, held up a worker at a convenience store at gunpoint demanding money from the register. It happened in the 400 block of Fair Avenue. Officers say he then ran off with the cash. If you can help police with this case, you can call 210-224-STOP. The Houston Texans closing their facility today after another Texan player tested positive for the coronavirus. Larry Ramirez with the details later on in sports. Stay with us. Well, as the holidays are quickly approaching, many of us are gearing up to host family and friends. But in all of the planning, don't forget to overlook one very important element that could cause a turkey day disaster, the kitchen. Here are some tips to prepare your kitchen for the upcoming festivities. First, don't overthink cleaning your oven and don't use the self cleaning function right before the holidays because that's actually when your oven would be most likely to fail. Instead, wipe your oven out. Also, make sure to clean the exterior of your oven too, but be careful when you remove the knobs. Uh, just use a moistened cloth. If your oven has knobs or switches, don't use a spray cleaner to clean them. Instead, remove the knobs, soak them in the sink, and then reinstall them. Not having enough space in your oven to cook everything you need for the holidays can be a major problem as well. So consider bringing out that toaster oven or your crock pot to help make those sides for your holiday dinner. That way you're leaving your oven for the main entree. We're talking Thanksgiving already. Yeah. Definitely doesn't feel like Thanksgiving out there today. Just, no. just nice weather. Did you know they're already putting out Christmas music on some of the... I saw <laughs> they had the <laughs> Christmas stations. decorations up at HEB. Wow. We're getting there. We're there. This year's moving right along. Good. Uh, the opera yeah. <laughs> is uh, unchanged today. It's at 659.1. In your pollen count, nothing to worry about. Mold's in the low category. It's at 140. Drought monitor is out. Not a good situation. We're going to let you know what it shows coming up. We were just discussing that we want it to be New Year's Day. Yeah, you were already doing somersaults, apparently. Oh, yeah, there's that. <laughs>
a little, a little ahead I, of I'm yourself. Ta- I'm <laughs> taking suggestions on on the story I, I, I'm going to tell, other than the truth, which is, <laughs> I tripped. I want to hear your suggestions. Uh, how about you email them yeah, to right. yeah. Ursula? <laughs> we got to get a story out of this, I'm pretty sure. we got to get a better story going, man. Well, we hope you feel better, Ursula. I feel absolutely. fine. Absolutely. absolutely. Good. good. Well, the, the rainfall situation, as you guys know, not good here in South Texas. The drought monitor came in today. And look at all those colors. This is not good because you go out to West Texas, there's extreme drought, exceptional drought. And now here in South Texas, we have an exceptional drought. It's a small area there in uh, parts of Uvalde and Zavala County. But uh, it's again, the, the, the extreme drought stretches a little bit farther and, and the rainfall is just not there in the forecast at all. Places like Uvalde, Batesville, or Prior, Crystal City, down in Criso Springs, this is where things are really dry. Now here in San Antonio, we're under a moderate drought. So things are starting to shift in the wrong direction here as well. And the forecast going forward just doesn't uh, hold a lot of rain. As we look uh, at Medina Lake, this is always a good indicator too. It's 46% full, it's down 28 feet from the conservation pool. And just within the last week, it's down half a foot. Uh, temperatures right now, 75 degrees, Boulevard 77, New Braunfels 72, Bernie Stage 78 right now in Hondo. Warming into the 80s for Catula and Kennedy. You're sitting at 80 degrees this afternoon with a little bit of cloud cover. Dew points have increased quite a bit. You probably noticed that some fog developed this morning because we had that moisture really start to pour in here to South Texas. And so dew points are now in the upper 50s, close to 60. That's almost the muggy category. It's not extremely humid, but you will notice it. And as we get into tomorrow, there's enough moisture there where we should start to see fog redevelop. So we'll have some low visibility for the morning commute on your Friday. Uh, it should quickly go away just like today and we'll be back in the sun tomorrow afternoon. You can see the fog this morning on our time lapse. So we'll start at 6 a.m. here and uh, pretty much disappears there for a minute and the sun comes up and then we see a lot of that fog go away. Uh, then some cloud cover tries to roll in and right now we're dealing with partly cloudy skies. 75 degrees at the airport dew point as at 57 as we mentioned. And you can see the clouds here in the visible satellite picture basically stretching right along Highway 90 there and then up along I-35. These will scatter out for the most part, so I think it will be mostly sunny uh, later today. There's not much going on across Texas, at least rain wise. We do see some clouds and the reason for that, we have a little disturbance rolling through. It's not kicking up any rain, but again, it is producing a few clouds. This is actually going to sit just to our east next few days, but we're on the wrong side of it. We're on the dry side, so that keeps us fairly dry. And in fact, it'll bring us some drier air on Saturday. And so temperatures may get uh, bumped up a little bit. By Sunday morning, we're back in the cloud cover again. And then we'll be watching our next front. This is scheduled to arrive on Tuesday. There's just not enough energy here or moisture really to work with to get any significant rain chances going. We do have about a 10 to 20% chance of rain as this front moves through, but it will not be a drop buster, unfortunately. Uh, meantime, we still have tropical depression eight out here. Winds at 30 miles per hour. This is Central America here in the latest track. Uh, does take this into the Caribbean. This would be a tropical storm yet again, 40 mile per hour winds. This would be on Saturday. So cross over Cuba and it potentially work its way towards South Florida. Now at this point, doesn't look like it would make landfall, but get close enough to throw quite a bit of rain in the direction of South Florida. We'll keep an eye on that. This will not have a bearing on our forecast. At least it doesn't look like it will. Um, and it will stay a tropical storm at this point. 80 degrees, the high temperature today, mostly sunny skies during the afternoon cooling down into the 70s this evening and then tomorrow we'll start off with some fog and clouds 79 82 Saturday 82 Sunday a little warmer Monday there's our front 10 percent chance it's all we can give you at this point and uh, maybe a little bit cooler as we go into Wednesday guys mm, not a whole lot of rain out there thank you all right Larry so the Cowboys are prepping for the Steelers yes it's uh, the Cowboys and their two wins getting ready for the Pittsburgh Steelers who have yet to lose this season but the question who will be QB1 for the Cowboys? We know it's not going to be Ben DiNucci. And Texans' J.J. Watt says he's really not interested in a rebuild. Coming up. And what is your approach on that, kind of thinking about wanting to play here, finish your career here? Is that your, your mentality? Um, I am here. Obviously, I'm trying to do whatever I can to help us win games. I didn't really answer the question because Texans J.J. Watt just wants to win a Super Bowl. He knows his time is running out in big board sports.
Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys will have their fourth starting quarterback this season when they face the undefeated Steelers in Arlington late Sunday afternoon. That's because rookie Ben DiNucci is out after his performance in the 2039 loss to the Eagles in Philadelphia. With a chance to take the lead in the fourth quarter, DiNucci didn't see the blitz coming, fumbled the ball, giving up the game ceiling touchdown. So with DiNucci done, who would be the Cowboys quarterback this Sunday? That remains to be seen as former Longhorn and SMU quarterback Garrett Gilbert will compete with Cooper Rush, who's familiar with Kellen Moore's offense after spending three seasons in Dallas from 2017 to 19. Now running back Ezekiel Elliott played for three quarterbacks when the Ohio State Buckeyes won the national championship in 2014, but this is the first time in his career he's going to have to play with four. We've had a lot of injuries this season, and uh, I mean, there's been a lot of guys in and out of there. And um, I mean, we just got to be all be ready, next man up mentality, and uh, get ready to play some ball. It's great to have Coop back. I love Coop. Uh, you know, he's a great teammate. Uh, it's great to have him back out here with us. No other staff player, or no other player, I should say, or staff member has tested positive for coronavirus after quarterback Andy Dalton, who is recovering from his first concussion of his career, tested positive for COVID-19 this week. Now, the Houston Texans are going virtual after a player tested positive for coronavirus. The team shut down facilities today. The Texans found out about the diagnosis Wednesday night and moved all team operations to virtual for today. ESPN has identified the positive player as linebacker Jacob Martin. The Texans say contact tracing is underway as the player self-isolates. The team shut its doors last Wednesday following a positive player test, and offensive lineman Max Sharping was sub subsequently placed on the COVID-19 reserve list. Now, meanwhile, the NFL trade line came and went without the Texans making a move, despite the fact that former head coach and general manager Bill O'Brien gave up their first and second round picks in the 2021 draft. There had been talk that the Texans might do J.J. Watt a favor and trade him to a contender since he only has one year left on his contract. That is not guaranteed, but that didn't happen. And when asked about his approach and mentality on wanting to finish his career with the Texans, this was part of J.J.'s response. I'm not looking to rebuild. I'm looking to, I'm looking to go after a championship, and that's what I want to do. So, um, whatever's in the best interest of the Houston Texans, that's in the best interest of myself. And so, um, but like I said, I'm I'm interested in, in winning a championship in this league. That's how every player's goal. Not exactly what Texan fans want to hear when you consider all JJ has done for Houston. Kickoff against the Jaguars in Jacksonville this Sunday is set for noon. Yeah, a very cryptic message there from JJ. Yeah, well. right. All right. Thanks a lot, Larry. You got it. Well, we just finished wrapping up Halloween and it's not even Thanksgiving. However, some people are ready for Christmas music and one song in particular is getting a lot of plays. A new drug for Alzheimer's waiting to be approved. What it'll take to get the medication to people who need it. It's still ahead. The number of Americans seeking unemployment benefits fell slightly last week to 751,000 a still historically high level, a surge in viral COVID-19 cases and Congress's fa failure to provide more for struggling individuals and businesses are threatening to worsen the American economy. Eight months after the pandemic flattened the economy, weekly jobless claims still point to a stream of layoffs. Before the virus struck in March, the weekly figure had remained below 300,000 for more than five straight years. The U.S. continues to set grim COVID-19 records with the number of cases, hospitalizations and deaths on the rise across the country. Health experts warning that things will only get worse as we head into winter if Americans do not follow safety precautions. Here's ABC's Rena Roy. More than 100,000 new COVID-19 cases were reported in the U.S. Wednesday alone, the highest daily total since the pandemic began, according to the COVID tracking project. The nation's death toll now at least 233,000, the worst in the world. This special education teacher in Arizona recently falling victim to the virus. Just complete sadness and, um, and concern for his wife, Denise. I can't imagine her pain. 
The pandemic taking center stage in this historic presidential election. Americans now waiting to find out who will lead the country in fighting the virus. Because we're like nine months into COVID and it's still getting worse and not getting better. Hard hit El Paso, Texas, continuing to break its own records, trying to keep up with an influx of patients and deaths with surge tents and refrigerated morgue trucks. Europe also facing a surge, the UK now on lockdown for the next month. People in London and enjoying their last night out on Wednesday. No, I've got so many friends that work in hospitality and I think like my heart is absolutely breaking for them that they're not going to have a job. There is good news on the vaccine front. A front runner in the race, AstraZeneca, saying it could have results from its late stage trials before the end of the year, with the vaccine potentially rolled out soon after. Meantime, the pandemic is still taking a toll on the economy. New numbers out today show 751,000 new jobless claims were filed in one week, marking the 33rd straight week of historically high unemployment levels. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration will soon consider whether to approve a new Alzheimer's drug. The Peripheral and Central Nervous System Drugs Advisory Committee is meeting on Friday to discuss an experimental treatment for early Alzheimer's. The committee is expected to decide whether or not the FDA should approve it if it goes forward. Rather, the Alzheimer's Association says that they do support it going forward. And if it does get approved, aducanumab could be the first new Alzheimer's drug in almost two decades. Tropical depression Ada continues to be a threat in Central America. The system continuing to cause heavy flooding in Honduras, Guatemala and Belize, where they could see nearly 30 inches of rain. Now, Ada made landfall Tuesday on the Nicaraguan coast as a Category 4 hurricane. And at least one person has died in Honduras due to the storm. Ada now on its way to the U.S., passing by Cuba and later South Florida. Justin was just talking about that. It's going to kind of zigzag around, but as much as we need rain, it's not going to help us out much, is it? Does not make it to Texas. And what's interesting is this time of year, we start to get fronts coming through, and it usually pushes a lot of that activity away. Here's a look at some of the headlines that uh, we have going on today. Clouds will thin out. It'll be warm this afternoon. We may get some morning fog tomorrow, then partly cloudy during the afternoon. And then this weekend, we're expecting things to warm up just a little bit. We're talking low 80s. And we may get a bit more cloud cover on Sunday. Notice still no rain there in that forecast. And probably if we're going to see any, it's going to hold off until Tuesday. Uh, temperatures right now, fairly warm. 80 degrees in Castroville, 77 Stinson, 74 Randolph, 77 in New Braunfels, 74 Kerrville. In the forecast, uh, we should be up around 80 degrees today. That's right about where we were last couple days. That sunset is at 544, dropping down to 75 by 6 o'clock. And then 70 by 8 p.m. with those southerly winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. We'll have another look into the weekend and next week with that front coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. All right, Justin, thank you. It looks like the NBA's upcoming season will tip off before Christmas. We have details with Larry later on in the show. It's your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. The FCC is fining T-Mobile $200 million. This after Sprint was caught claiming federal telecom subsidies they weren't eligible to receive. You might remember Sprint and T-Mobile merged earlier this year. The investigation found that Sprint falsely claimed benefits from the federal government, all to help cover the costs of phone and broadband service for more than 800,000 subscribers, even though those subscribers weren't using the service. Meanwhile, YouTube has refused to take down a video that seemingly violates their policy on misinformation. The video is titled Trump One. It was posted by One America News Network. That's a right-leaning media outlet. The clip 
clip shows an anchor for the network falsely claiming that President Trump won the election. The clip also urges people watching the video to take action against Democrats. And Ford's newly appointed CEO Jim Farley promising Wall Street greater transparency. Moving forward, the automaker will start releasing their U.S. vehicle sales on a monthly basis as well as a quarterly basis. The company started reporting sales on a quarterly basis back in 2019. And the Chichetta Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. That's right, it's not even Thanksgiving and people are already feeling the Christmas spirit. Mariah Carey's hit song you just heard, All I Want for Christmas Is You, is seeing a surge in stream requests already. Billboard reports the song received more than a million on-demand streams on Sunday and Monday alone. That's up 160% compared to the last two days of October. Now, Carrie's Holiday Classic was first released in 1994. It took over a decade for the song to hit number one on Billboard's Hot 100 list, and it landed that spot in December of 2019. Yeah, now that song is, song is going to be stuck in my head all day. But if listening to holiday music isn't enough for you, Marble Falls getting ready to open their walkway of lights. During the celebration, you can walk through 2 million holiday lights in Marble Falls. It opens at 6 p.m. on November 20th and lasts for 44 days. Of course, masks are required for all activities when visitors are unable to maintain a six-foot social distancing. You can learn more about the walkway of lights on marblefalls.org and, of course, on ksat.com. There is no cost to attend. However, visitors are welcome to give monetary donations to help support the event and local nonprofits. And here's your chance to support a nonprofit in our community by making donations to help fill up Christmas stockings. Our KSAT community partners are teaming up with the local nonprofit SA Youth for its Stuff a Stocking Holiday Drive. As far as donations go, here's what they're looking for. Small toys, arts and crafts, supplies like markers and stickers, and healthy snacks. Or you can just give monetary donations. SA Youth says a $25 donation will cover the cost of one holiday stocking. You can donate between now and December 18th. SA Youth is hoping to spread a little holiday cheer to 650 students this year. If you are able to help out, you can go to ksatcommunity.com and we have a full list of items they need and a link to donate. Or you can go to the San Antonio Youth website. I feel like we're speeding our way to Christmas. We, we want to get there just to end 2020. I'm, I'm serious. That song, All I Want for Christmas, is still stuck in my head, so... Oh, all, right. all right, sorry. <laughs> in case you're wondering, who, we did the math for you, all right? There's just over 49 days until Christmas. Wow. Okay. 11 hours and 19 minutes, too, we gotta add that. We gotta do the end of the year, <laughs> don't you think? Because everyone is pretty much done with 2020. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm ready Can for Can you get us there, over. Justin? So what you're telling me is I have 49 days to listen to All I Want for Christmas. <laughs> it's a good song, but let's, Making it worse. Making it worse. Ah, 75 degrees, the high temperature today. 55, the low this morning. The averages are 76 and 54. So, yeah, we'll be pretty close to the average. I think probably a little bit above it this afternoon. We did get up to 91 back in 2017, so it could be much worse. We're, we're going through some pretty great weather. It's just that we need the rain. There is that small chance next week. We'll take another glance at that forecast coming up. We're uh, admiring the beards here in yeah. the studio. And finally, the weather helps us with it. We're not Yeah, thank we're goodness overheat. it's not 95 <laughs> degrees out there while you guys are growing your Movember. You know, you know, the problem, though, is it's, it's kind of dry, so it's a little itchy. Is it? At this stage, yeah, yeah. it's just starting out, so it's a little uh, prickly. But. but it is for a good cause, Devin. Your beard's looking great, my friend. Likewise. Uh, for cancer research. Absolutely. We're doing it for a reason. We want you to ask why we're growing our beards. Donate. You can go to our website. We have more on No Shave November. Very important cause near and dear to our hearts. Let's go outside for you right now. We've got partly cloudy skies here in San Antonio. 75 degrees at the airport, 77 Stinson, 75 at Kelly. Winds pretty light across the board here, so winds aren't going to be much of an issue. But what wind we are seeing is generally out of the south and east, so that has upped our moisture level just a little bit. Good thing for my beard, I guess. 76 Comfort, 73 Bernie Stage, 77 in New Braunfels, 78 right now in Hondo. 
and uh, down to the south starting to see some 80s there too. So low 80s for places like Pleasanton, Kennedy, and uh, down towards Catula as well. Dew point tracker shows dew points will be relatively high today, right on that pleasant muggy line. But as we get into Saturday, we'll get some slightly drier air in here. So the dries us out a little bit. Temperatures may jump up some. And then by Sunday and Monday, we're back in the moisture. And when you start seeing dew points like that, that's when you can anticipate maybe some morning cloudiness, maybe some morning fog as well before we get our next front, which is right now scheduled for Tuesday. Speaking of fog, there'll be enough moisture tomorrow morning too to see a little bit more of that. So your morning commute could be uh, a little foggy. Visibility could come down. And really, it could be anywhere here across South Texas. We saw that uh, this morning. Didn't last very long. But uh, we should see a repeat tomorrow. You can see some of the clouds here up and down I-35, then extending out towards Highway 90. These clouds are really starting to sort of melt away a little bit. So we should be looking at mostly sunny skies uh, throughout the afternoon and evening hours. A little disturbance rolling through. And I feel like a, a broken record here. I've been saying this for the last couple of weeks, but look how quiet it is across the country. For fall, this is just kind of odd. Typically, you get fronts coming through areas of low pressure, snow. All that fun stuff it's just not there you got to go up to the pacific northwest before you really find any rain uh, it's coming down a little bit of snow in the higher elevations this system by the way is the one that will bring us a very slight rain chance as we get into tuesday it'll swing a front through and that may uh, give us a shower or two here's how the forecast looks area of low pressure just off to our east this does nothing more than bring in a little bit of dry air for us on saturday and then as we get into Sunday, moisture returns. We'll get some morning clouds, maybe some morning fog and drizzle. Here comes the front. We think sometime during the day on Tuesday as it comes through a shower or two. There's just not a lot of energy associated with this. This is not a strong front. It'll cool us down a few degrees and that's it. We've got to touch on Ada very quickly. Right now winds at 30 miles per hour gusting to 40. Latest forecast does redevelop this into a tropical storm. This would be Saturday morning, winds at 40 miles per hour. It would cross over Cuba. We'll see what that does to the storm. Sometimes that sort of tears it apart a little bit, and then it will turn a corner here. Now the models diverge from there on what happens after this. It's kind of anyone's guess. Some want to take it up towards Florida, some just dissipate this thing. Either way, it doesn't look like it's going to have a whole lot of effect on the mainland other than maybe southern Florida where they could get some pretty good rain out of this. So something to watch, but it doesn't really mess with our forecast much. For us, 78 degrees by 2 o'clock, 80 degrees your high temperature, mostly sunny. We'll keep those winds pretty light. Look for some fog tomorrow morning, 79 on your Friday, low 80s this weekend. Clouds return Sunday morning. We'll get some more of that on Monday and just a slight chance for shower Tuesday, a little cooler by uh, Wednesday, high of 76, guys. Thank you, Justin. All right, more football news. This time, UTSA football. Yes, UTSA Rice. is uh, getting ready to take on Rice. So UTSA is four and four. They have four games left in the regular season, and coach says he wants to make this a November to remember. And Tom Herman sent a message to D.W. Rutledge. We got it coming up. Roadrunners will travel by bus to Houston on Friday for their game at Rice this Saturday. The Roadrunners are 4-4 four four this season after their tough 24-3 loss on the road to Florida Atlantic. In that game, quarterback Frank Harris was sacked four times, and the nation's leading rusher, Sincere McCormick, was held to 54 yards. Head coach Jeff Trailer wants this to be a November to remember in their final four regular season games. So what does that mean to Harris and his teammates? It can either go good or bad for us. Uh, it could be November to remember in a good way. Uh, we win these next few games or in a bad way and we lose the next few games. So we got to go out there and just keep preparing and keep watching film and getting better. Rice has only played two games this season due to COVID-19. Kickoff is set for 2.30 p.m. Saturday and the Owls are five-point favorites. And the Texas Longhorns are back in the hunt for the Big 12 title following back-to-back -back conference victories against Baylor and previously undefeated Oklahoma State. Texas is 4-2 overall and 3-2 and in the Big 12. And will face West Virginia, who has the exact same record, which means the winner of Saturday's showdown will continue to compete for the conference title, and the loser is out. Now, yesterday, as his weekly press conference began, UT head coach Tom Herman sent this message to former Judson head football coach D.W. Rutledge, who is recovering from severe injuries after a recent biking accident. First and foremost, uh, sending... Our thoughts and prayers to uh, Coach D.W. Rutledge and uh, his family. Uh, I know Coach Rutledge was in a, a pretty 
nasty bicycle accident uh, on Friday and uh, one of the legends, uh, not just in this state, but uh, in the country and in, in our sport. And uh, he's, he's in ICU right now. Uh, we're, we're checking on him daily. And um, if, if you find it in your heart, uh, I know him and uh, his family uh, certainly could use uh, your thoughts and prayers. After showing signs of dramatic improvement, Mr. Rutledge was released from University Hospital. His son Clint posting on Facebook that his dad is still in pain, but home. Ohio at Central Michigan last night where the lights went out at Kelly Short Stadium due to a power outage with 117 left in the first half. So they just started halftime early. Band members were dancing with the lights on their cell phones. About 14 minutes later, the stadium lights turned back on. And once halftime was over, the two teams finished off the final 117 of the second quarter. And then they kicked off the third. Central Michigan won the game 30 to 27. Plans are in place for the NBA 2020-21 season to tip off on December the 22nd with a reduced 72-game schedule. As reported by ESPN, the NBA Board of Governors and Players Association are holding separate meetings today to finalize the agreement. The league believes the December 22nd start will allow the season to end before the Summer Olympics in mid-July, where Spurs head coach Greg Popovich is scheduled to coach the U.S. men's basketball team. Guys. We'll be cheering them on. Thank you. All right. And today on SA Live, it is time for a giveaway. We're going to take you, or rather, they're going to take you to some cool places, but I uh, hope you're not driving. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're hiding back yes, there. Yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. It is time for a getaway, and Fiona's already on her way. No, I mean, <laughs> we take you to a few places around town. Yeah, the remote location feeling on just a tank of gas. The winter wedding season is picking up. We get some helpful tips on planning a wedding this year and next. Hey, it's an all new Elder Eats and preparing for tamale season with a new Berea Tamales. Country music artist Katie McKenzie has released her new single and she sent us a special performance. She's such a great singer and we have a couple of recipes for two classic cocktails. That is one of them that originated back in the 50s and then one that dates all the way back to the 19 teens. Ooh. Way back then, yes indeed. Okay, so we want to know. Where is your favorite Texas getaway? That hidden spot that other people may not know about? Where do you take your family to get away and relax? Let us know at SA Live KSAT. Yep, that and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live, so stick around.